hello and welcome to a thrilling science experiment Thursday. So, before we get into the experiments, hi, I'm Miss Katrina, and I know a lot about dinosaurs, and it is my favorite thing in the world. So, I thought it would be really cool to show you some of my fossils and tell you a little bit, a little bit about them. So, um, first thing you're going to want to know is what is a fossil. So, fossils are the preserved remains of ancient animals and plants and other traces of living things from many thousands to millions of years ago. Very specific processes must take place in order for an organism to become a fossil. Chances of fossilization are actually very rare. So there are only one in a million. The word fossil comes from the Latin word fossilis, which means dug up. Most fossils are found or dug up in sedimentary rock and are formed by a process called uh, petrification. When an organism dies and then is quickly buried by sediment, its soft tissues usually decay and the hard parts, like bones, teeth, are left behind. Sediment rock build over the top of the remains and eventually they harden into a rock. Mineral rich water then seeps through the spaces and pores within the remains forming crystals. Very slowly over many years these crystallized materials replace the organic material cell by cell. Thus. A fossil. So I am going to show you some of the things I have. Um, like this one right here, which I put on a necklace, or my friend did, is it looks just like a weird rock, but this is actually fossilized. Uh, it's something called amber, which is fossilized resin of ancient trees. So like tree sap. And then and the other ones I have are called ammonites. And ammonites were squid like marine mollusks, and they first appeared around 240 million years ago during the Triassic period. They went extinct with the dinosaurs long, around 65 million years ago during the late Cretaceous period. And they look kind of like little octopus um, in a shell um, or a little squid with a shell so kind of like a hermit crab that in a squid mix but this is what you get when it becomes fossilized so here let's see if I can show you is an ammonite and here it's another little one you see you can see in these ones that it's got this little this is its shell right here. So the shell just twists all around. And then out here is where the little creature comes out. And it looks like a little squid. I really like ammonites. I think they're really cool. Um, another one that lived in the water. And it's, this is a fish fossil. It is uh, called the nitia. It was a small fresh water fish that thrived during Paleogene period around 50 million years ago. So this is what it what it looked like originally when it was alive and this is what happens when it becomes a fossil. So this one's just a little one but if you know back in the day during the dinosaurs fish were ginormous. They could get to like 10 feet long or bigger. This is the Nitia, it's a fish fossil. Alright, I'm going to show you a trilobite. And so I have a small trilobite and I have a big trilobite. Uh, this one is in a package, so let me get this out so you can see it better. You got to be very careful with these because these are millions of years old. So uh, trilobites are a well known fossil group of extinct marine erythropods. I mean, the name trilobite refers to the three parts uh, of their uh, skeleton. 
there. Um, no, they lived a very long time ago. But see here, see if you can see it. These right here are where its eyes were. And then this, you see all these little ruffles. This was its shell. I wish I had a picture of it when it was alive, but it looked very much like this, just yeah, more lively and less like a rock. So yeah, they could be many different sizes. They could be ginormous. Um, they could be like a foot big or this big, and then even this one you can't really see very well. But this is one. This one's really tiny. This one. The this one is about the size of the box. This one is about the size of its eyeball. So that was a trilobite. I'm going to show you another one that I have. Um, but before I do that, I'm going to show you something that um, you could mistake as a fossil, and it's not actually a fossil. But if you were to just find it, you might think that it was. And so this is something called dentrite. And um, this rock. And dentrite is found in limestone and results from the presence of manganese in the mother stone. There are branching figures, figures or markings that resemble moss or in a tree form. They can be confused to be fossils, but they are not. So they can found, be found like worldwide. But if you can see, I don't know if you can see very well, but it looks like a little fern right here. Like little tiny plants growing in it. And so... These can be mistaken as fossils. They're really cool like fossils, but they are they are not classified as fossils. Still really cool though. This one, so this is how you will find uh, a lot of your fossils. If you were to go digging, you would find them in a rock. So um, this is a tooth of a mosasaur. And this is how you will find fossils. So you are to find this in uh, wherever you find. If you go to Morocco looking for a Spinosaurus tooth, which I also have those, which I'll show you in a minute. But if you were to go digging, you would find it in something like this. And how they do that is they use little um, like toothbrushes to brush them out. And you have to be very careful because you don't want to destroy it. But... This right here is a mosasaur tooth. And mosasaur were aquatic creatures. I don't know if you've ever seen um, Jurassic World, but the dinosaur that's in that movie that comes out of the water and eats the great white shark. Sorry if you hadn't seen that, and that was a spoiler. But that was the mosasaur, the big aquatic one. They were huge. They are very vicious creatures who would eat everything they're basically like the top predator of their time and they would even eat their kids so they were not the nicest creatures but they were very cool to very cool in the Jurassic World movie and very cool to see their fossils all right so the next one I am going to show you is the last one and this is my Favorite. This is my favorite dinosaur of all time. Um, I think it's just the coolest thing ever. <laughs> but um, this is a Spinosaurus. So Spinosaurus was the biggest carnivorous dinosaur to ever walk this earth. Uh, a lot of people think that that may be the T-Rex, but it was actually the Spinosaurus. And so this is a Spinosaurus tooth. And I'm going to put my finger up next to that. Uh, I do have somewhat small hands, but not that small. But look, that's about the size of my finger. My pinky, the exact size of my pinky. And these lived in Morocco. And here's another one right here. Um, let me see. This one also has a bunch of facts on it, which I'll read out to you. Uh, but this is what it looked like right here, this dinosaur. This is what its skeleton looked like. 
So the Spinosaurus is the largest of all known meeting, meat eating dinosaurs. Um, estimated about 8 to 12 tons uh, and could get up to 20 tons and they could grow to be over 40 feet long. Um, yeah, so that's big. Very, very, very big. <laughs> um, it lived in the North African coast. It was suggested that there are closely related species in South Africa due to the breakup of Pangaea. So if you don't know what Pangaea was, Pangaea was basically all the continents put together. And so as time went by, they all broke up into what we have now, which is the seven different continents. And so, yeah. So it lived during the late Cretaceous period, which is approximately 100 million years ago. Um, and it is 35 million years older than the Tyrannosaurus rex. So it uh, is believed to primarily be fed on large fish, land animals, and semi-aquatic life. So it lived on uh, land and in the water. And so these little guys, uh, if they were in the same time period, this is what it would be feeding on, except much, much, much larger. Um, so it had the spine that you saw in the picture, which I will show you again. But the spine along its back extended up to five feet or more. So I'm 5'2". And so its spine, or the, another word they call it is sail, uh, was about the size of me. So this is what the sail was, is right here. This is its sail. And it's believed to, um, they have many different theories of what they think it could be. They think it could just help it swim. Um, they think it helped regulate its body temperature. Um, there's many different theories. And it's teeth. So the Spinosaurus, like all dinosaurs, shed its teeth um, as it grew. And they would become worn, making teeth, making their teeth pretty easy to become fossils. So, um, dinosaurs, a cool thing that a lot of people don't know about dinosaurs is dinosaurs would actually lose their teeth kind of like sharks do. They lose their teeth a lot. And so, um, if you were to look for, to buy a dinosaur, just buy a skeleton, you probably wouldn't be able to do that. But if you were to try to get, unless you had tons and tons and tons of money, but if you were to try to get its tooth, that would be more easily obtainable to get because there's just so many out there. Well, I hope you all enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. Uh, don't forget to put your name down in the comments. Uh, comment down and your name will be put into a weekly raffle where you could get a prize. Um, if you have any questions about dinosaurs, or something cool that you learned or something you want to see again, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll get back to you. Um, yeah, have a great day, rest of your day and stay safe.